There's a place in Africa where you can walk with lions. Where you can be part of the pride. And these volunteers have a chance to do just that. They've come from all over the world to work in this unique conservation program. To see more lions hunting free in the wilds of Africa. And to engage with them like no one else on Earth. There's never a dull moment at Antelope Park. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Coming up in this episode, <laughs> the volunteers participate in an exciting game capture mission. Two intern researchers observe how lions react to spices. The volunteers walk with giants. We learn about cubs' feeding habits. A devastating poaching incident is discovered, and a bushfire runs wild. The volunteers are up at sunrise to take the cubs out on their daily walk, ever hopeful that today is the day they make a kill. I've been here just one and a half weeks, but, you know, I'm keen to learn, so I take everything in and I love lions and I'm a cat person, I'm a cat woman. <laughs> so, uh, and I just love these two, so I got to know them really fast. When they start playing and chasing each other, that's the best thing, you know. Lion walks provide the lions with the freedom and space to play in the wild, an important part of their development as they hone their natural instincts practicing the vital skills needed for hunting. Affection like this strengthens the relationship between brother and sister, Dala and Dingani. This bond will be crucial for good pride dynamics once they are released into stage two. Well, domestic cats may not tolerate water, but these lions clearly do. Another group of volunteers are hard at work setting up a bomba in order to capture planes game for translocation to the lion release site. This is a painstakingly long process, but it'll all be worth it when the excitement of game capture begins. Well, it's been a, a long day so far. We've been up early in the morning, um, getting started, getting ready to start uh, putting up a big boma, uh, which is currently what we're putting up one section of now. Um, it's going to be used to, to capture and, and, and house some animals um, uh, just for a period of time until we introduce them into a new area, they become acclimatized to it and get used to it and, uh, and calms them down after the trauma of being captured. It's quite an experience, it's quite an exposure. Um, helicopters going, curtains running around, sirens going off, so it can be quite stressful. And this is ideally just for them to settle down and, uh, and relax into their, their new environment. so that they can put the elking across. <laughs> this is to feed the zebras and the wildebeest. So we're just getting it into the enclosure. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's all about getting stuck in, no matter what the task. These are just some extra supplement for the game. They're specifically designed uh, for like the Impala and Zebra and stuff. And they're just because um, cause we're keeping them in here in this boma for maybe two weeks. Uh, they need obviously the forage with the hay, but then they need like extra supplement with these and some molasses. 
so we're just spreading it around to make sure they've got plenty of food. The first thing to do is restrain the animal. We'll be struggling in the net. Just get it restrained. Head first, and then if a second person comes, back legs. Back legs. That's going to be quite a job because they can really kick. Best plan is to grab the legs, put them together with both hands, and hold like hell. <laughs> and keep your arms be like, like shock this. because okay. they're going to be kicking. Yeah, they let it kick you. Yeah. Volunteers gear up to get ready for the main event. You be the Practice makes perfect, and the volunteers show just how it's done. The helicopter is off on a mission to herd the animals towards the boma from the air and everyone quickly takes position, ready for the capture. The helicopter siren is sounded to warn the volunteers that the animals are close, and the people stationed at the curtains must be ready to close them as soon as the animals have entered. Fleeing from the sound of a helicopter, the animals stampede into the warmer, and the curtains are quickly drawn behind them to prevent them escaping. It's an adrenaline rush as the volunteers jump into action. The impala are caught in the net, and the volunteers have to be quick to pin them down. <laughs> hold the back legs. Oh, got him. Can you hold <laughs> got it. Are they all been got, yeah? I think they are. Okay. I was going to try and sit on it the way they were. We could maybe just stay the way we were. Are you happy with that? Yeah, we were. Yeah, I think we were all right. Okay. Were. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because we're calming her down. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. amazing how much they like let us do, like trust us to do these kind yeah, of things. Really. Like, yeah, really. It is really. You know, because cool. they really care about animals here, so it's yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge success, and more importantly, no one's hurt. The Impala will now be moved to a new location within the park, and everyone is amazed. This leaves up there. That was really cool. Really cool. That was, that was so good. awesome. Really good. Not every day you can so see you carry an Impala over your neck. Oh. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that was really cool. As part of the lion enrichment program at Antelope Park, many experiments are conducted to keep the lions in the breeding enclosures from getting bored. Today, two volunteers are assisting with the research into the effects of different spices on the lions and how they react. I've decided to do lions and try and find out which spice is the best spice for them, which one they prefer. And I've got garlic, oregano, lavender, catnip and... Cinnamon, cinnamon sticks. Um, but today I'm doing catnip and see how they do. Um, so we put it into these grass parcels because um, it has to be something that doesn't have a scent. So grass was the only option really because I, I just want them to smell this. So we put that, is it going to fit, do you reckon, there? So we're just putting that in there. And then we get some of this bark. And what I hope to expect is for them to grab it straight away, run a sort of play with it maybe for 10 minutes, and they'll probably lose interest. I imagine they have done with the other spices. But it's just to see how long they play it with it to determine which spice they prefer, really. So. They'd never had cinnamon before <coughs> when we tested cinnamon on them, um, and their reaction was great. Uh, lavender, they have oils for their enrichment, um, so they're used to that kind of scent, so we didn't really get much of a reaction from that, but this they've never had before, so yeah. it should be interesting what, what they react like. Yeah. Okay, so what I do is just measure out um, steps just so it's equal away from the gate, so you go that way now, that way. Place it on the floor. Is it? Gonna pick it up. She knows.
normally he jumps straight up. <laughs> You can definitely tell they've got the spice in their mouth because they do that tongue thing and the tongue comes well out Ooh, everywhere. Well, the face says it all. Catnip may not be their favourite, but it certainly gets them energised. Clearly, catnip causes a euphoric effect. They're definitely more playful. The importance of the spice test is to gather information as to what will benefit captive lions' well-being and reduce stress levels. We leave the lions to their spice tasting and join the elephants on their afternoon excursion. We're hurting the elephants. <laughs> Except now we're taking pictures. If you want some more. The volunteers revel in the enormity of these giants. To get to walk with elephants is definitely a unique experience. I'm walking behind some elephants in the middle of Zimbabwe and having a great time. <laughs> They're going to bed actually, so we're walking them back to, I don't know, their little enclosure. They've been eating all day, so it's time to sleep it off. So cool that they know where to go. <laughs> They're leading us. <laughs> they don't need to be herded. Uh, an elephant is from far away, you're surprised they don't look as big and then you stand next to them and they're pretty huge. Um, I wasn't expecting their like hairs on them that are pretty spiky, pretty prickly, but they're really nice to pet and they're so cute up close, so you don't mind. <laughs> homes and they know that they get a treat when they come here so they're happy to be back. <laughs> the volunteers are going out on a day-night encounter with the two T's, Tembile and Tuli. The point of all these lion walks is for them to get used to the wild animals here so they can try and practice to chase them and so when they're older they kind of know what they're supposed to do and they start hunting. Thule has discovered a tortoise and is very intrigued by the specimen. Tembile is forced to watch from the sidelines as Thule tries to coax it out of its shell. Game is on. Who will be the first to give in? The tortoise or Thule? The lioness seems to be enjoying herself, despite the fact she can't get to the juicy meat inside the shell. found toy, she carries the tortoise off with her, showing it off to the volunteers. Finally, she releases the poor creature after a fun-filled game. As the sun sets, the games are over, and the tees are in serious mode. They begin to prowl the park, searching for prey. A herd of zebra has been spotted, and at nightfall, the lions have the clear advantage. The two lionesses begin to stalk up to the herd, but their tactics are still not quite up to scratch as they walk straight at the zebra. They've been spotted, and the chase is on.
the lion's energy doesn't last as long as the zebra's, and they give up the chase. The volunteers call it a night and head back to camp. It's feeding time for the babies of the park. And Lorna, the lion intern, is surrogate mum to these cubs. This formula is made up of kitty milk. It's kind of like um, baby formula, but it's got all the proteins and stuff that um, cats need, like taurine. Um, it's also got some natural yogurt in there, uh, egg yolk, um, as well as whole milk and some full fat cream. And that just gets heated up just like a baby's bottle and then fed to them four times a day. Back home, I was a receptionist in, this, in London. Um, I mainly did it to save up to come here. And here, no, no day is the same here. I mean, one day it could be spending all my day with the cubs, the next day it could be in the release site, looking, darting, measuring the cubs in there. The next day it could be up at the breeding program, checking the health of those lions. You can't compare it at all. Definitely not. A group of volunteers are heading off on an important activity, snare sweeping. With so many mammal species in the park, animal poachers push their luck all too often. Okay, so this is what we call a snare, uh, and you normally find them in different sizes. For the small animals, then you find them for the antelopes and bigger animals. And we're going to be walking in the bush uh, looking for these snares. It's another way of controlling uh, poaching. What we're going to do, guys, we're going to spread out from the main road. Uh, what we need to cover is this wall section, right? We can start following the me. volunteers split into groups and patrol through the bush. Finding just a single snare could make all the difference for an animal. Yeah, now we just found um, a snare with an impala in it, caught in it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's obviously a gruesome way to die. What happened is the poachers came come into the park um, and make snares like these, like create a noose um, like the animal then runs into and gets stuck in and the harder you fight it, the tighter it gets. I think it's been dead maybe two days already. So it's been some time. It's a devastating moment for all involved. The volunteers have learned the harsh reality behind poaching and the struggle to come to terms with it. Yeah, it makes, makes me very angry. But So it calls for more snare sweeps next week. That's all we can do. A bushfire has broken out, and everyone is on hand to fight the flames and stop the fire from spreading. It's a hot and gruelling task. Wet branches are used to extinguish the fiery inferno. Um, there's just basically been a quite a large fire. So we're just trying to put it out with branches, try and push the fire backwards to try and keep it from spreading too far. Um, yeah, it seems to be pretty much put out from this side. Uh, but we're going to go over there and see. He's moving off over there. It's kind of crazy. It's my first fire in my whole life, so I mean, yeah. Well, we don't have much to use. We only have, you know, leaves and a bit of water. So. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> oh, 
the staff is really, really good. And um, like volunteers obviously try to help, but staff is amazing. They're like just going for it and non-stop. It's super hot and it's very scary and it's just spreading like hell and there's wind and everything and they're just speeding at it like, like professionals. <laughs> I give them thumbs up for that. Yeah, okay, it looks like the wind has changed. That's fine, just keep back wind, just make sure it doesn't cross the road. Okay. On this way, right this way, guys, come on. Right, guys, can I just have everyone's attention just, just quickly? Okay, great. You guys have been doing well with this fire. You've managed to put it out all the way around there. Okay. Um, just one thing, these guys back burning from up here somewhere, maybe just behind the smoke. There's another team. This fire's already hit the road. Uh, and we're trying to uh, sort of protect it to stop it from coming from from jumping the road. So they they coming back this over the fire. So we'll keep putting it out here. If the fire turns and it gets quite strong coming towards you, okay, it's all based on wind. You guys may have seen that already with the flames. Whichever direction the wind is going is generally the direction that the fire is going to go. So if the wind happens to change and come towards you, best place to be, safest place to be, is on the place that's already been burnt, okay? Because it's already been burnt. There's not going to be fire then. It's not going to come back there. So like for this, for example, the fire turned and was coming towards us this way. It's always best to just try and get in and around the back of the fire and then you're onto the stuff that's burnt and then you can wait for it to settle down and then come back in and, and start attacking. But just remember that safest place to be is on the other side of the fire where it's already burnt. It's a serious and frightening situation for everyone, but the volunteers are adamant to help, despite the danger. Back burning basically the fire to make a sort of block. So when the fire gets to here, there'll be nothing to burn. So basically, we'll stop the fire. That's about it. Basically. Um, it looks like we've got it under control now. So we're going to head back to camp and hopefully um, the guys will finish up and the fire will be out. The last bits of the fire are extinguished and the volunteers are relieved after a job well done. Coming up in the next episode, Dan takes the R's on a lion walk. Volunteers make a very realistic toy for the lions. Leanne and the interns dart and microchip the cubs. The volunteers are eager to watch the R's demonstrate their hunting tactics. A delicious snack is hidden for the lions to find. And the D's sharpen their hunting tactics and put their skills to the test. <laughs>